some people are still alive. Yeah? Firstly, let me say there's little to raise the spirit better than a wonderful choir. Thank you very much. Another, another round of applause. It's, a, it's, an, it's an amazing thing to me that we don't see more tenors, uh, sopranos, mezzo sopranos in the world coming from the Northern Cape. Uh, you guys should practice that and work hard at it. I have a theory that says that the origins of human voice in song are to be found in the very first human scream for freedom. And that's why it stirs our soul so well. Uh, so well done. Thank you very much. We're here to uh, say a word of welcome and of course to welcome you all to the, to the 10th uh, Northern Cape Writers' Festival. Uh, this university is now five years old and I think we've been involved in the last four years of the... Uh, was it five years, Sabata? We've been involved in five years of the, the Writers' Festival um, and it really is one of the highlights of, um, of the university, on the university's calendar. Uh, we started out as a very small university uh, and even in that early years we figured that one of the things we want to do is keep a, a strong hand in this world of letters, if I can call it that, uh, which is what writing is about. And there was a, there's a, there are a few reasons for that. The one is um, to welcome sort of uh, old friends, our MEC, uh, the circle, always good to have you here. Professor Shole, uh, always a pleasure to have here, um, Brian Willen, but also to welcome new friends. And to those of you who are from outside of the Northern Cape, here is the first, uh, the cradle of humankind. This is where the first human beings spoke the first human language. And so it's fitting that we have a writer's festival in this part of the world. Uh, because the first, today, see this, the first human language was spoken in this part of the world. Um, and so as we think through what it means to be African, to be South African, to be members of the, of the human condition, uh, one of the ways in which we do that is through our writing. Uh, and the idea that we gather once a year to have conversations with each other about writing and what it means. Um, and that we happen to do that at a place called Salt Lake University. Uh, it's a special moment for us. So Plaiki uh, was indeed a man of letters um, in, ma in very many ways. Um, and he, he represented the finest of what we can think of as telling the Northern Cape, telling the African story, telling the Botswana story. Um, so, Plaiki, so Plaiki spoke that. Um, the fact that many of us even in Kimberley don't know where his great site is. Uh, is something that we, that worries me. But it's something that we will correct. Um, and I've argued repeatedly, and I still, I still hold very firmly to that. You don't develop languages by writing dictionaries or... Uh, you, you don't develop languages by writing dictionaries or textbooks. You develop language by, write, by through creative writing. It's creative writing that starts to develop the archive of a community. And that archive is what gives us the shared narrative. I buy into the argument, uh, which is um, uh, Benedict Anderson's argument, that the nation state really only became possible when we were able to write and print books. That the novel, Don Quixote, created the opportunity for the nation state. And that's because we can share that a group of people who don't know each other can actually share a narrative that goes beyond the color of their passports or what's written on it, makes them a coherent nation. And if we're worried about social cohesiveness in South Africa, writers are going to help us solve that problem in serious ways. And so as you go through your deliberations over the next three days, I want to first of all say a very warm welcome to uh, the Northern Cape, a very warm welcome to Salt Lake University and particularly a warm welcome to the writers, the 10th Writers Festival. Have a great time, drink deeply from the conversations, and make good friends. Thank you very much. <laughs>